Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I had the opportunity while I was traveling here to meet up with Flo, Hi. Who, who runs Real Time History. Uh, you may remember Flo from uh, being head of the team that ran the Great War Project. Yep. Which was, obviously, I mean, if you guys don't know about the Great War, I don't know what rock you've been hiding under, but a fantastic YouTube channel that covered all of the events of World War I in real time, week by week, exactly what happened 100 years ago during the Great War. So, of course, the Great War is, it's not over, no. but it has largely scaled down since, you know, we have Armistice last November and we're coming up on a year past that. And the, the, the after the post-1918 world is very complicated and it's more, it's less grand battles, it's more diplomacy, New World Order kind of thing. We're covering that because it's important, but it's a different phase for the channel. Right. And you started looking into some other avenues of content to produce. Yes. And you came up with the Battle of Berlin in yeah. 1945, yeah. which I think is a really pretty interesting choice. How did you come to that? Well, the first, the, the first reason for me to come to have an interest in Berlin is because I'm born and raised in Berlin. Um, the second reason is, I am, is a personal family connection. I have a great grandfather who fought with the Wehrmacht. He was on a mortar team. Um, by the way, I watched your mortar video, very good. Uh, that gave me a good understanding of what he might have done in the war. He fought through Barbarossa um, and most importantly he was also from Berlin. My family goes back to Berlin uh, in the 19th century. Okay. And he, the last time he was back in Berlin was February 1945. And then he went to the front, which by then was pretty close to the city, um, to the south east, to Görlitz, near okay. Görlitz. And he died in the aftermath of the so-called Battle of Lauban, which was like one of the last offensive actions of the Wehrmacht, actually, in, at that time. Um, so March, 9th of March, 1945, he died from a um, premature explosion of one of the mortar rounds. Oh, oops. So, the first thing you think about if, as me, as one of his descendants, is like, well, that's a pity. Wouldn't it have been easy or possible for him to survive because it was so close to the to right. peace? Two months away. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't seem that much. And then I started digging into it and I realized um, th his chances, even if he would have stayed in Berlin, were not very good because it was a very chaotic situation. Um, there was so much um, irregular fighting going on once the last front uh, in front of Berlin broke down. And it's such a, it's a combination point of World War II in a sense. It's like you have the advancing Red Army disintegrating uh, armed forces of Germany. You have like the, the Nazi leadership basically grasping or tr trying to do some last ditch desperate things um, to you know, and, and build, build like uh, Wunderwaffen and this kind of thing. And it's like this culmination point of total war. Right. And then I looked at documentaries or tried to find documentaries about it. And guess what? There is not really that much about it. Hmm. Because if you watch documentaries about World War II, they, you know, you talk about when you come from the West, you talk about Market Garden, you know, it was just the 75th anniversary. You talk about the, the Ardennes. Mm -hmm. um, and then you talk a bit about the capturing of Berlin and you have this propaganda photo of the guy with the flag on the Reichstag. That I've seen that picture. Yeah, everybody yep. knows that. But what really happened before that? I mean, it's like the Russians had, sorry, the Red Army had two and a half million men wow. amassed uh, on three different, they called it fronts, uh, army groups. I did not realize it was that many. Uh, a few thousand tanks, airplanes. Um, the G remaining German forces also were a few ten thousands. You had two and a half million civilians still left in the city, plus the ones, the ones that live in the towns and the villages around it and everything. And it's like, it, in all intents and purposes of World War II, a gigantic and important significant battle, but it usually gets jumped over because it's very messy to cover. Okay. Like, you know, the... I suspect there's also a large element of, in the, in the at least the Anglophone, the English-speaking history, well, Americans and British weren't there. It was the Red Army. Yeah. And we tend to kind of skip past a lot of the things that the Red Army did. Um, I mean, the Americans are pretty close by, right. actually. Um, and, and, the, and them being close by at the Elbe River actually also is something that played a role in the battle indirectly. It influenced the uh, escape route of the, of the ger remaining Germans, uh, civilians and armed forces alike. They tried to escape towards the American positions and away from the Russians. Um, 
and you know there's all you know we already talk about it for like three minutes and I get I get into the rambling <laughs> you're, mood you're clearly the... very passionate <laughs> about it and I understand that yeah. um, it's an interesting subject for me because while I know about uh, a bunch of the the last late ditch last last period of the war firearms I just I don't know that much about the actual battle itself. Yeah, uh, and and um, so I, me as someone who produces like historical documentaries was I was pretty muffled when I said saw that you know the the kind of uh, material that's out there is not really satisfactory, and I don't think it gives someone who is not really into academic level history a good understanding of this important event. And then I said, hey, I have a production company. <laughs> I'm in Berlin. Berlin. I'm in Berlin. I know the locations that are written. You know, if I, I read the books about the battle, and I know these locations. Like I drive, I drive by some of them on my commute to work. So then we said, "Hey, let's do this ourselves." <laughs> okay. So, and this is how we we ended up with the project called 16 Days in Berlin," okay. which is the ultimate documentary about the Battle of Berlin, covering the battle day by day. Okay. Because it's 16 days, 16 and a half days, and we're going to cover it each of the important steps and see how basically from starting with the Battle of Zelo Heights okay. it was at the Oder when the Red Army advanced over the Oder which is the last big river to the east of Berlin and then until the very end when the basically the fighting only took place in a very small area inside inside of Berlin and several spots around. Okay. So you're crowdfunding for this right now. Yes, we are. It's the money. How are you going to like What's the what's the format of the show? So the format is, um, as I said, the basic structure is the day by day coverage, right. and uh, we have our studio in Berlin, um, in an old factory actually. And so we just need to step mm. around uh, outside to go to these locations, which is fairly unique because usually it involves a lot of traveling. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have we have a set um, modeled after an old Berlin flat, and we will have a host Jesse who will um, guide you through these historic events, but we will also not just stay in the studio, we will go outside, we will go to, you know, we have a huge flag tower, for example, in Berlin still standing, which played an important role. Um, there is like several important locations where we will go to and show you how these locations shaped this battle and the, and the outcome of it. Okay. Um, we, will, we are also working together with friends and experts from the show, like with military aviation history, um, military history visualized, to YouTube channels you might know, or the Tank Museum in Bovington, German Tank Museum, to you know, cover aspects where we don't really have the expertise, like you know, tank warfare, for example. And we also want to work with you. I anticipate I will have a very small, but hopefully pretty cool part talking about some of the late war German firearms, obviously. Yeah, you already did some videos about the Volkssturm uh, rifles uh, mm -hmm. a while back, uh, which is also why I had the idea to say, hey, maybe you actually know, so you seem to know a bit about firearms. <laughs> That's the impression I got. I, I know which end the bullets yes. come out of, yeah. at least. So um, you will um, see, um, see to it that we can cover this as accurately as possible. I really like the idea that you're going to a bunch of of good outside experts to cover different aspects of the history. Yeah, I think that's that's a really cool approach, and it's something that has sort of been done historically with various talking head experts. But yeah. in a television uh, situation, usually those guys kind of are footnotes. Yeah, and it sounds like you're planning to have a lot more basic, fundamental input from those people yeah, in yeah. the development of the show. We, we, we won't pretend that we know these things better than you do, for example. So we, give, we will give you the time in the finished documentary to tell the important, to answer the important questions about this specific aspect of the battle. And yeah, we're doing this via crowdfunding. Uh, we have a minimum goal at the moment, which is 50,000 euros, which we have almost reached at, as of this recording. Yeah. And this, uh, amount will allow us to produce a very a very good very detailed documentary about the battle which I think will be very will, will be more than there is out there at the moment okay so that's it why are we even recording this you're gonna hit that that goal at, maybe before we even post this well if I'm being honest you know if when I when a man can dream what we really want to do is um, is have a bit more funding than just the 50,000 and every additional amount pledged to the to this project would allow us to 
work closer to, together with our partners, with our experts. We also want to um, pay some historians to do some original research of the for for pay, some ice. Paying historians. Yeah. Now and, what a crazy idea. Yeah, and <laughs> I can tell you, most historians could use some money for their research. Yes, they because, absolutely could. Yeah, and and it would also allow us to basically extend the coverage that we have um, at the moment we could we would be we would need to be very selective about which locations uh, we would go to and which people to work with and which aspects of the battle to cover and the more funding we have the more all-encompassing our documentary could be and for me as someone who is from berlin and has like a personal relation to that battle you know my dream of course would be you know to cover it in a still entertaining but also deep kind of way so that we could make it into a real series okay. that, you, that you could watch and that basically sets a, a standard for these kind of documentaries. So I just went and assumed that you are putting this on YouTube. What is the distribution going to be for this documentary? Um, this documentary will be available to everybody who backs it. So every perk uh, on the campaign will allow you to watch it digitally and it will be available to view later on but not on youtube not ah. for not for free on youtube okay why is that you might have heard about uh, the, if you follow forgotten weapons you heard about <laughs> the situation w that is the you know situation with um, demonetization youtube having certain rules and ideas about what kind of content they want and i can tell you from researching the battle of berlin that it has all the ingredients in it that YouTube doesn't like to put. Uh, That's putting it mildly. Yeah, yeah, it's, pretty much everything. Yeah, basically everything. It's a, it's a, very, it's not a very pretty battle. It's not a very, you know, a great moment in history, in a, in terms of like in its significance, it's great, but it's not like a pleasure. Uh, and if you're going to cover this accurately, yeah, you you can't be always thinking about. What, what is YouTube going to yeah, censor exactly. of this? You can't write it around their rules. Exactly. So, okay, that so, makes sense. So it will be available um, on our own platform, on basically via our own website. You will be able to get a login and watch it. Um, we will work on that. You can also watch it offline, like download it. Okay. And one thing that we also think will work in the future, but I can't make any promises about the timing of this, um, is that we want to put it on a few streaming services because uh -huh. you know it's still okay. a classical documentary. Um, so, and I think they are more lenient towards having this kind of it content. Seems like a perfect thing for like Amazon Prime. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's something that we also eye for. But if you want to have it when it comes out, guarantee it, then please support us okay. on Indiegogo. And, and you're also doing this as part of a project to build a company, to build real time history, to be yeah. able to do more things like this. Yeah. I yeah. assume. Yeah. If, the, if this works out well, then in the future, we would be certainly interested in working on different kinds of historical events for this. I mean, the, world, the end of World War II was not the only significant thing that happened in Berlin. It was also not the only, only historical thing that happened uh, uh, around Berlin or in Europe. I mean, we have, uh, we have a network for our work from the Great War to experts all over Europe, all over the world, actually. I mean, you know, you're from, from the US. Uh, we worked with people in Japan for the Great War. And, you know, we have this kind of network. And I think in the, in the long way, uh, our vision is to spread out, cover different kinds of events in this very in-depth way that maybe is not something that you would see on TV anymore, right. sadly. Maybe. Definitely not something you would see on TV yeah. anymore. I think it's really fantastic to see this being done by a small company with a genuine passion for history, which you obviously have. There have been a couple times in our, before we started filming, mm. when I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Mm. That, say that on camera, because you're getting, you know, you're clearly excited about the subject. Yeah, I am, I um, am. And seeing a small company like Real Time History doing that in a way that, you know, a large media conglomerate, they look at this in terms of how long can we keep people's eyeballs? How many ads can we stick on it? How do we accommodate the lowest common denominator of the least interested people? Yeah. When online media gives us the opportunity to instead go deep on it. And in my case, like I'm a one man operation. I have I've built a network of access to cool guns and things, but I don't have the production quality that lets me go really deep into a subject because I do a video every day. You guys are doing this as more of a long-term, well, not long-term, but a well-planned, comprehensive documentary project. For a YouTube production cycle, we are, we are planning in decades. 
Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so. yeah, um, we would be very happy if you could support the, this project. Uh, as I said, Ian will be uh, happy to support us as well. Yeah. And if you have any questions, um, you know, you can also just, you can contact us directly via the Indiegogo page um, or just put comments uh, when this video goes live. I will happily answer them uh, as well. And I hope you like this idea and um, yeah. If you like seeing history done right, I think this is a great opportunity to help support it. So yeah. I'm in. Um, if you guys like the idea, hopefully you are as well. Um, thanks for watching. We obviously have a link to the, uh, the crowdfunding, the Indiegogo page down in the description text. And uh, without further ado, I will return you to your regu regularly scheduled Forgotten Weapons channel. Auf Wiedersehen.